moment is now for Christina. She has made it from the audience <laughs> as the guest host. How does it feel? Wonderful. I've graduated. That's yes, great. you have. So I'm really happy to have Christina here. So tell, tell everybody about yourself, about Lucky Girl Designs and everything else that you're involved with. Girls sure. So I've got a few things. I wear a few hats. I have um, my 222 Evolve company that I just launched with my business partner, James Wong, and that is a community organization. And with that, we want to just make sure that everybody has access to uh, the things that they need to live a healthy, happy, easy lifestyle. And Lucky Girl Designs is a uh, digital marketing company, and then I'm also co-managing director of the Girls in Tech with Amber Bradley. I brought <laughs> a bunch of guys. Yeah. Right, and you are you are a jack of all trades, so you basically yeah. can solve any problem, which yeah. is what I like about you. In yeah. fact, when we came to you with a problem about needing fortune That's cookies, right. you just figured that one out, even That's though it right. made no sense how you had right. that it's skill, but you content. did it. <laughs> <laughs> somehow, yeah, somehow you did it. It's all content. All right, well, we appreciate having you here. So Susan's out of town for a few weeks, but you'll be filling in, and I'm excited to have you. So Thanks. thank you very much for the time. Excited to be here. Um, so let's start by talking with our first guest. We have Kelly here from Antibytes. Now, you guys have a really interesting tech company, but you don't even like to define it as that. It sounds more like it's something for people and their behaviors. So Antibytes is all about giving power back to the users, and um, I'm actually excited to be here because it's the first time we're publicly speaking about our first product. Oh, breaking ah. news for your first time. Yeah, I like it. Yeah. 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 It's so um, we're building an effect ephemeral content sharing network and it truly is ephemeral in the fact that we do not allow screen capture, uh, video, or photograph of your content. So when you share your content it truly is ephemeral. Okay, so ephemeral means um, lasting for a very short time. Okay, okay, gotcha. <laughs> like it just disperses, falls apart, privacy kind of right. Yeah, and like you know the apps like Snapchat, WhatsApp, um, ephemeral apps are not new. Um, there's a new one popping up every day with the concerns of privacy and all of that. Um, and but Snapchat and those apps, they really aren't ephemeral. Um, they let you have the content for 10 to 30 seconds, but within that time, I can do a lot with your content. I can screen capture it and share it on Facebook or what have you, and it lives on forever. You okay. are no longer in control of your content at that point. Have something that you didn't want shared, get shared, and were you like, I gotta build a competitor to this? Or how did it, tell me how the team formed and kind of like what you guys, how you gelled together. And sure, it's, it's actually very this. interesting. Um, we didn't move here as a team already. We we came together here. Oh, um, okay, gotcha. Yeah, we were all in downtown Las Vegas for different reasons. Obviously, the exciting tech scene was a big draw. And um, I ended up meeting my CTO. He had this technology, and I was like, this is incredible, we have to do something with this. So um, we went from this kind of two to three person core to over 10 people in the matter of four short weeks. So we've ramped up really quickly, uh, but it was all about um, the collisions in the community. So coming oh, to good, Vegas yeah. Tech, you, you hear a lot about the collisions and it, and it's, it really does happen. And so it was, it was really exciting. Oh, that's good, yeah, it's, it's, yeah, I love when I hear the story of people that came together like downtown and had a forum. Um, so tell me a little bit more about um, what your experience downtown has been like. Is it it's been really incredible. We're out of the co-working facility, work in progress, and um, the community has just been fantastic. Everyone's been so welcoming and so kind, so we're, we're really happy to be here. Okay, oh, that's where you're from. You do a work in progress too sometimes, right? Yeah, we meet yeah. up in work in progress every other week. Right. So you guys ever collided before? I've not <laughs> met no. him. No. no. Are you at 7th Street or 6th Street? 6th Street. Uh, we're watching it live. Right. <laughs> this is a collision on camera. <laughs> no, keep, keep going. Yeah, just My let it play out. Show, that's <laughs> Every other Thursday, we uh, we meet up at six. So. You look really familiar. So. Yeah, I've been around downtown a lot, so we've, we've probably ran, been very nearby each other, if not met. No, I know. Now you know. <laughs> yeah, that's great. First question. All right, but uh, let's let, let's talk to Sean for a little bit. We'll yeah. So uh, Sean mm -hmm. has a really great oh, event cool. coming up: the uh, National Day Civic Day Hack Event. Yeah, the National Day of Civic Hacking, um, we've got coming up on March 31st, I'm sorry, May 31st and June 1st at the Innovation Center, and it and should be pretty the, awesome. And what's the purpose of that? Everybody's coming together to what? So what we're trying to do is get everybody to come together to solve civic problems with technology. Um, some people have problems, like a problem that was solved last year was uh, a group of high school students came together and they put together an app that went through your symptoms if you have a cold or thought you might have ah. the flu. Yes. And they would go through your symptoms, and they at the end they would tell you you have a cold or you have the flu, and they tell you how to fix that. Ah, that's um, great. Which was a, a pretty simplistic um, app, 
But what they did that was kind of cool is they, if you had the flu, they would send a message to the CDC who tracks flu outbreaks. Mm. And it was a group of high school students that put this together, which was really cool. Data. Yeah. I love the data. I love the numbers lately. That's my new favorite. Yeah. So if you want to be involved with the um, National Day of Civic Hacking, how, how can we get involved? So the easiest way is to get a ticket on TicketCake.com. Uh, if you just search for the National Day of Civic Hacking, it should pop up. Um, we've got tickets available for $10 unless you're under 18 or a student, and which if you email me, we'll get you tickets for free. And what's your email address? It is slooker, S-L-O-O-K-E-R, at codeforamerica.org. Wonderful, wonderful. And so this is happening all over the nation, right? On the same yeah. date, at the same... Yeah, there's over 30 cities now that are throwing different um, National Day of Civic Hacking events, anything from hackathons to meetings to get together to talk about open data policy for government. Uh, that's, a lot of, that's a lot of hacking. That's yeah. a lot of data. It's pretty that's awesome, right. yeah. I love it. So basically, all these groups are, like, are, are they playing with data that's already available, or are you guys actually going in and pulling more data out of the system? Like, are you... So it's, it's actually a little of both. Um, we were really lucky in Las Vegas because we had the Code for America Fellowship here. Mm -hmm. um, so the government was already really eager to, to work with us because they had a really good, good uh, rapport with the Code for oh, America right. guys. Yeah. Um, so we had a lot of data that had gotten opened up as a result of that. Um, we also go through and we get our own data when we see the need for it. Um, but we're really trying to work with the government to get more open data for citizens to use. Mm -hmm. How much, of the, how much of the government data that we should have do you think we do have right now? Like 80%, um, 50 55? So it depends on who you ask. Um, okay. it, it really just depends on what kind of data the person thinks we should have. Mm -hmm. um, compared to other cities in a recent survey that um, I think Hack for Change did, I can't remember for sure, um, we were at about 30% of what, what they did on the survey, and we're working to get that filled out. And, st and startups can use that data to build apps for free, right? I mean, that's yeah. a good source for them if they can think of a Yep, the data right? is completely open. Um, we've chatted yeah. with the city about it before, and they just want people to use it. That's good. OK. Yeah. That's good. Um, I need to throw the conversation back to you, though, because I forgot a couple of things. Call to action. Is there anything you'd like the audience to help you with with Antibytes? Sure. So we are launching about in mid to late June. Uh, you can go to our website at upscure.com, U-P-S-C-U-R. Uh, sign up to join the waiting list. You can be one of the first to uh, get access to the app and about our event. We'll have a launch event and how you can get involved with that. OK, that's cool. All right, so before we end the segment, we're going to task you with the fortune for the audience. So this, this is a fortune cookie that represents of all of our fortunes for the following week. So, um, so yeah, so don't blow it because <laughs> you're gonna ruin their lives and mine too. So make it a good one. Okay. Oh, that's uh, an interesting tactics. So is you're, it you're excessive? I need, I, oh, yeah. Some kind of Star Wars <laughs> thing or something? Or? <laughs> like a metal okay. detector? Like, yes. Oh, that's the one. Yes, this is the and one. And why? Can you describe why you think that's the one? Yeah, it talks. The feeling to me. you got yes. this, yes. is the positive energy. Yeah. <laughs> okay. the inner, yeah, this is this is it, guys. Okay, so let me tell you what we're gonna do with it. So you're not gonna get a chance to open it, unfortunately, yeah. but you will hear it at the end. So we are gonna give it to our uh, qualified fortune cookie handler in a minute, um, and he's gonna take it to the back of the room, and then the person that he gives it to is gonna open it up and read it. But like the telephone game in preschool. Oh. We are going to whisper what it is across uh, all of the seats. So the person who opens it is then going to read it and then sell it to the neighbor. It'll keep moving its way and it will snake eventually up here to the front row. And then at the end of the show, we're going to find out what the actual fortune is after everybody's got a chance to sort of get their fingers into it and um, you know just create it, make it big in our, our fortune. So if we get our special fortune cookie handler out here, please, if everyone could lower their heads. Thank you, Alan. I appreciate it. All right, and thank you guys for coming out. We appreciate thank you, Sean. Thank you guys. And thank, you. thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, thank you. So, thanks, Kelly. Thank you. Yeah. meowing yet. Um, that was a little premature, but those meows are, are in the way we encourage guests. Well, so I, don't worry, it's not a weird thing. Right? Well, I meow all the time. I'm, oh, got, you do? I've got four cats. Oh, yeah. I'm you... the best meower here. Oh, really? Do you want to... Do you wanna... yeah, I could have a contest. Well, I didn't know it was going to start I, this I, way. I'm going to win. Do you want to <laughs> give us one of your good meows? Um, I'm a really good meow. Okay. Meow! <laughs> yes, great job. Wow, <laughs> entrepreneur and meower, I like it. <laughs>
<laughs> All right, so let's we'll dive into it. So you started a couple really important companies. You had um, the Fashion Profit, uh, which was also a 501c3? No, that's oh, that my was, for okay. profit. <laughs> okay, that, one, that one's the for-profit one, right? All right. And then you also have the um, Fashion Business, the other FBI, which is the 501c3, which um, is the nonprofit. And you provide fashion industry with resources and training to turn um, a lot of these fashion entrepreneurs into a profitable company. So Correct. you actually teach them the business side of it. Right. Um, so yeah, so first off, let's just give a big hand to Francis Harder. Thank you for coming out. I appreciate it. Let's get on. Yeah, no one know me as. That's good. I think you beat them wholeheartedly. <laughs> um, so anyway, so you, uh, let's talk about the story. That'd be a good icebreaker. So you put a bunch of girls in um, underwear, and then you really tricked a lot of people into giving you money. I did. Yeah. Well, so we're in the town of, uh, yeah. <laughs> they do that uh, all the time here. Yeah. <laughs> right, okay. <laughs> well, uh, we needed money for the nonprofit, and it was very difficult to get anybody to listen to it. So I said, okay, we'll put a show on, put a very, very good fashion show on. We got Brazilian girls in Brazilian bikinis, not underwear, bikinis. All right. That is all right. I changed it in my mind or whatever. <laughs> Who knows? Yeah. And uh, we <laughs> hired some beautiful fur coats and got, and I told the girls, those guys at the end of the runway are your target. Okay. So off they went, and boy, oh boy, you know, it certainly yeah. went. Well, we we came up quite well after that. Okay, so so these were investors that you got, and what did they end up? How did how did it kind of catalyze the rest of the? Well, what it did was invest in building out a whole center downtown, so it enabled us to really get off feet off the ground. Mm, gotcha. So we had a training center where we had computer lab. The whole premise was on entrepreneurial training. My background is design, and I realized after having a company a couple of times and being screwed a couple of times that maybe uh, it's not just all about design, that right, you, know, right. you, you really have to know what can go wrong. And it's, there are so many other things that can go wrong besides having a wonderful line. You just have to be able to find the money, and you have to have the right people involved. And it's timing, as you probably know, with anything to do with entrepreneur. But the apparel industry is so multifaceted. It's not right. just about inventing the widget. You've got so many things going on, and one thing goes wrong, and then, right, and then you're screwed. Triggers all the other ones. Yeah. Okay, so so you were so you actually kind of fought all these things in your own, and you thought to yourself, like, gosh, this is ridiculous. Like, there should be a resource out there, right. and then you took the entrepreneurial step to create it. So tell me about what you created. Well, after being also in education for many years, I was a professor at Otis College of Art and Design and at FIDM for many years, and in England, and I realized that the colleges were not providing the entrepreneurial training. Mm. They were giving them wonderful design skills, but they weren't giving them the skills they needed. And, you know, I hope there's no teachers in the audience. But any teachers? Any teachers? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. <laughs> <laughs> so there, yeah. So I realized that. That's still still words. They still say what we wanted to say. Yeah, right. I'm going to say it anyway. <laughs> right. So I decided that we needed to teach people business skills. So, okay. you know, instead of teaching them to be great designers, they need to be great designers, but they needed to know how to have a balance sheet and where the money's coming from. You can't just do it, you know, right. pull it out of the hat with no money, you know, bad yeah. credit as well. So it kind of grew from that, and I wrote the book when I was teaching at Otis and yeah. Fashion for Profit. And then somehow I met somebody who wanted to start an incubator, and it grew from there. So we've been now 1999, it was, and we've wow. been in business. Yeah. So we're not only doing entrepreneurial training, we do displaced workers training, which is very rewarding. A lot of people who lose jobs, we are able to retrain them, especially on software that they, if they don't have those skills, they're not going to make it. Right. So we can retrain people. And then entrepreneurial training, displaced workers, and also incumbent workers training. So um, <laughs> tell me about this book. And um, what I'd like to actually hear is, like, is there a story in particular that comes to your mind when you think about all the people that have kind of gone through the system? Is there kind of one person that sort of embodies the best of what they can get out of this book? Well, I think we've had some great stories. I mean, not necessarily from the book, but through contact and maybe with the book. One of them was Stop Staring. I don't know if you've heard of that line. It's really a retro line. She started off when, about the same time I started the FBI, and she's grown it really grassroots, not really borrowing any money, very, very popular, very successful, produces only in America, oh, and nice. a retro yeah. light sells in Japan and Germany. I mean, it's really good. Uh, and you all probably all know the Nasty Girl, who's oh, an, yeah. amazing, uh, an amazing merchandiser and successful story. Um, we've, we've had, you know, not that... Nasty Girl necessarily is my product. But right, but, you, but there's an element of your fingerprint yeah. inside that so, story, right? Yeah, Where you're kind of helping people understand how to 
not just be creative, but be creative in a way that's sustainable in the long term. A lot of it company. is people successful people. It has to be understanding how to work hard. As you know, it's not just going to happen mm. on eight hours a day. Is, is that the one? Like, if there's one big takeaway, is that the one? Like, just get ready for a lot of hard work, like a lot uh, of just grinding through it. I, I and well, networking. I would say is key. Okay. Yeah, everything that I've been fortunate enough to have success with is being about people I've met, mm. and the people who you've met or meet is going to be another journey and opening up another door. Right. I mean, I come to Magic. I've been doing seminars here for Magic for the last fifteen years, and. Every time I come, we have a packed room, and there's going to be people in there that connect to you. Right. And whether, you know, I actually got a great contract with the United, United Nations working with women in Peru and just got an invitation to go and work with women in Nepal and working with Kashmir products. It's all just only, from, yeah, just from networking. Kind only of networking, people. right. Okay, right. so yeah, so we, we call it collisions around here, but we're kind of, this city's kind of got a lot of that at its core too. So tell me about your experience in Las Vegas. Like, what have you thought about the community you've met here and any kind of uh, collisions or networking opportunities you had in this city? I think it's very exciting what you've got going on. I yeah. was invited through being at Magic to Stitch City, and here I am tonight. So that was networking, and I'll I went you. and saw what they were doing down there, and I also worked with some of the teachers that were involved, and um, Kevin, who's, who works mm -hmm. there as well. Right. And I think it's fantastic. Okay. I just think it's very exciting that you have a city here that supports entrepreneurship. Right. LA right. doesn't, unfortunately. But, you know, I think what you've got going is, is an amazing network and, an, and great, a great energy. Right. Well, and these, but I mean, are a lot of these resources online? I mean, I know you have a building, but like, um, is this stuff that uh, fashion, do they need to be fashion specific to take advantage of these resources and are they available? Well, we have, well, I have my nonprofit website and we do webinars all the time and they're available to anyone around the world. Uh, we do them probably about two or three times a week. And then my own, um, my for profit site, you know, usually is, I'm still, we're working with networking to grow that, but there's so many things going so on, crazy. it's hard. Yeah. So, so your, your brain like can just change, right? Like you're in non-profit mode and then you're in profit mode. Yeah. And then like... I try to make it profit mode the whole okay. time, but it's not easy. <laughs> okay, good. In fact, you're right. That's probably why it's the non-profit that'll work. Yeah. yeah. It's ADD. So good. Yeah. Just keep the one mentality around. Okay. Right. So, um, so the last question, I want to talk about this amazing event you had at Union Station and you're going to be having again this year. Right. Um, tell, explain what Union Station is and what this event is like. Well, if anyone's been to Los Angeles, to it, yeah. I mean, Union Station is just this amazing um, architecture. I'm from Manchester in England, so when I go oh, yeah, there, yeah. I'm like, this is mind-boggling because it's so Hollywood and you, it's a retro building that's being kept beautifully. So we do a big show there. And the last two years, we've probably had a thousand people. We've had the fire marshal in closing it oh, up. Yeah. and. It, it was an amazing event to me. It was like standing back and looking at it and going, is this real? It was just sort of surreal. Right. And, and so what was the event for? And, um, Fundraiser for right. our nonprofit. Okay. So we have celebrity. Actually, Zappos was involved in the one ah. last, not last year, the year before. We had Marissa Liv Rivers, who was a, a celebrity MC, mm -hmm. And she had a line that she was doing for Zappos. So we highlighted that. So it was, it, you know, we have usually highlight about 12 different designers. And some of them get an award. Moss Adams Award, and then we give it an Emerging Designers Award, um, and actually it's and, exciting. Okay, and then uh, so so basically anybody can contact you. Anybody interested, let us know. I don't know. We might might have someone. Who knows? But yeah. um, actually, I have just a tiny little bit more time, so I'm going to throw in one more question. But we had a um, conversation about what the technology looks like for sort of um, buying things online. I thought that might be something kind of interesting because it's just this. Seems like this constant pain point. Like I buy stuff and just don't know if it fits. It's a pain in the butt to mail it. Like, what do you think's gonna happen with that? And what should anybody who's an entrepreneur sort of be aware of? Well, I think it's very exciting. In fact, in our center, we have a body scanner um, where you can get a whole, a whole digital avatar of you. So you go in and they'll scan you. So you've got now a scanned body of you that you can then take on a say a, a keychain, plug it into your computer, you can try things on, you can see whether it fits, whether mm. it's going to be changed. Or what's happening with retailers, you take that into a store, plug it into their computer, and they'll tell you what needs to be changed. Oh, say you gotcha. find a jacket yeah. that you like, but or in my, my particular situation, it would be a pair of pants that needs to have five inches cut off the bottom, oh. right? So, so you know, they would then Great. be able to do all that, and then it would be shipped to you. Yeah. So they could digitally change 
and mass customize it to you. That's, that's where it's going to go. So you'll go in a store, find one style you like, and then it will be customized to you, and then it'll ship it to you. Gotcha. So for entrepreneurs, any, anywhere along the line, they can provide value, whether it's in like trying things on digitally or, yeah, I guess sending like hems and things like that off could be all opportunities for new entrepreneurs to then go through this program and then eventually build a company, right? Yeah, well, what we offer is that they can come in and get the fit model scanned, and then they can do, instead of hiring poor models, I'm sorry, you're going to be out of a job, oh. <laughs> but then you can then digitize the body and you can do a virtual fit on them. So yeah. you, you can see how it's going to be fitted and it's hmm. very exciting. Yeah, because whenever I see those guys like with all the muscles and they're like showing off new clothes, I'm like, that's not how I'll look in it, you know? <laughs> no, right. Sad. Okay, well, that sounds really cool. So let's throw out a few URLs here. Um, fashionbizinc.org is where they can check it out. Um, and then fashionprofit. For Fashionforprofit.com. Fashionforprofit.com. Okay, and then um, anything else you want to, like any other calls to action? They say you probably buy this book on Amazon, I'm guessing. You have other places right, that you recommend the, they go for it? And that's the 10th edition, and um, I've just about had a nervous breakdown over that one. But oh. uh, <laughs> no, we've got 32 tenth, different yeah, people. Yeah, well, 10 editions, yeah. that would give me a nervous breakdown <laughs> yeah, well, too. That's a yeah, I had to redo it with, yeah. 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 get industry people who, we've got 32 different people who put their input into it. So yeah. it was uh, Good. like... Yeah, herding okay. cattle. Well, hopefully, yeah. hopefully we'll get some people um, through this because I think it sounds like a great, uh, great opportunity for them to learn how to be business people. So, Thank um, you. should we hear how good the audience can meow? Yeah, I think that would be a great move right now. <laughs> meow, 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 that was great. Yeah, All right, you. thank you very much. I appreciate it. There, let's take, let's take this clip off you before uh, uh. you run out. Mac Holiday. I've got a show on YouTube where I celebrate holidays every single day. It's called Holiday Wet TV. Please subscribe. Uh, today, for example, is National Nylon Stockings Day. That's what today is. Yes. Who's wearing your stockings? Anybody got any stockings on? I want to know. Nobody? All right, I got some stockings for you. Who would like a pair of stockings? Anyone? Oh, it didn't really go very far. That was sad. Let's try it again. Wait, I have, a, I have an unopened box. An unopened box for somebody. Yeah, that's what I did. I went out and bought stockings for everybody. Yay, what's up? So tomorrow is National Piercings Day. Who has piercings? Yeah? All right. I'm just curious, anyone want to tell me your, uh, your, your piercings? It, it, it's okay, because we can take it off of YouTube so they can be in personal places and you can show them too. Anyone? No piercings? Come on, this is weird. A couple weeks ago, everyone said they were an atheist, so I would imagine atheists would have piercings. I mean, is that like a bad thing to like, I was like wrong? Uh, so, I know, right? I'm all about stereotypes. So yesterday was National Dance Like a Chicken Day. Yes, that's what it was. Yes, that's really good, Pavel, I like it. Yeah, do you guys know the, uh, the famous party hit, the Dance Like a Chicken song, the chicken dance song? You guys know it? All right, I'm taking my mic off and we're doing it. Everybody's getting up. Are you excited? I know you're excited. All right, let's play.
Are you serious? Did you guys have a good time dancing? Yes. Yes? All right, good, good, good. All right. What am I talking about? Very good. So, in a couple of days, on the 18th, it's Visit Your Relatives Day. Who likes visiting their relatives? Yay! Mother's Day was just a couple days ago. Did you visit your moms? Anybody? No? You did? Awesome. Very good. Now, when I, when I think about visiting my relatives, I think of, like, homes and houses. You know, when I think about my friends, I think about crash pads and basement studios and roommates and all that stuff. I don't know if that says anything about my friends, but when I think of relatives, I think of houses. Speaking of which, our sponsor this week is Redfin, R-E-D-F-I-N, redfin.com, pioneers in the real estate brokerage world, responsible for your free beer. Come on. Yes, yes, yes. Now, what makes them really unique is that they're, they're different than all the other ones. They're hybrid. They're a tech company and they're a real estate brokerage. Now, there's no joke that goes on, if you know, in the real estate world that they're really way, way, way behind the times when it comes to tech. But, so they were the first to pioneer a map-based home search. So real estate listings will pop up, right? And the homes pop up and the map pops up. This sounds like, you know, old hat now, but 10 years ago, it was a big deal. They invented that. That shows their technology in the real estate world. And another example of today, they have um, like a one-stop hub for all your documents. Now this might sound weird, but no other real estate brokerage in the world has that, where all of your documents are located centrally in one place. Really easy to access online, on their app, makes it really, really special. What also makes them special, by the way, is their customer service skills. That is equally important to them. This is what they do. They got the agents, and the agents are always talking with the clients, right? They're trying to gauge what do they, what, what, what do they want, what do they need? And then they take that information, and they give it to the engineers. They're all working together to make your experience as a client really, really relevant and efficient and, and better to navigate. Amazing. Okay, so real estate agents, they don't make commission there. They don't make commission. Have you guys ever heard of a realtor not making commission? I mean, have you? Not heard? Yeah, it's, this, it's not, doesn't exist. But they don't. They make salary, they make benefits, but they don't make commission. What they do get though, is they get bonuses based on customer surveys. So when you're buying a home, you're selling a home, right? It's a process. It's two months, three months to six months. It's a big deal. So Redfin is always interacting with the clients about their experience. Those surveys are posted online. They do not in any way, shape or form censor them. They don't filter them. The good and the bad, they live online. You can click through all the agents and see all of their reviews. They have a 97% rating with customer service. And this isn't like Yelp, you know, when you go to a restaurant and you're just like, my waiter didn't refill my water, so I'm gonna knock this restaurant down two stars. No, these are authentic, real reviews because, you know, you purchase a house, that's like the biggest purchase of your life. It's like a, a relationship with your agent. So those reviews are real and they're awesome. So that I think also indicates the fact that their agents get bonuses based on those surveys shows how much they care. It's a win-win for everybody. And guess what, Redfin? They're opening up here in Vegas. That's what's happening. <laughs> opening up in Vegas. They're gonna have a launch party in just a couple of weeks at Downtown Cocktail Room and get, God, this is, this, they booked this sponsor segment two weeks in a row. Two weeks in a row. Not just today, but next week. And next week, I'm excited because I get to talk to you guys all about their crazy, insane, amazing mobile app, their further advancements in technology, and their launch party at Downtown Cocktail Room. So thank you so much to Redfin. Thank you, happy, happy holidays. And check me out on YouTube, Holiday What TV. Good night. All right, so we're here with Jennifer. She is actually our social media director for Girls in Tech. Yay, you're a rock star. <laughs> so uh, the fortune landed on you. Do you know what it is? Do you have it? Is it a good one? <laughs> All right, let's hear it. I have to say first that someone changed it on purpose. <gasps> I'm, I'm not kidding. <laughs> it's um, take a chance on the future of cats meow. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't it be hilarious if there actually was a meow at the end? Oh, no, it's, like, <laughs> it's like in bed oh, from yeah, now on, awesome. we're just going to do meow. No, just, oh. no. Take the opportunity to change something today. 
Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right. That's it. Thanks. Bye. Beat bump. Beat bump. Downtown project. Vegas, we the hardest. Remember like a flashback Vegas Tech Don't forget to spell it with the hashtag